Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday talk script. This week's topic is, what is the most controversial opinion you have expressed about a book? Hmm. I've been racking my brains about this one since I first saw the topic list because my book reviews don't tend to attract controversy. Not because I softball things, so much as because if I comment on a book, I tend to do it in context rather than it being a blunt, this has worth, this doesn't statement about things. For example, I am, as you can probably see, a couple of years past being a teenager. So, with that life experience, my response to teenage problems is different from the way teenagers respond, both due to my neurochemistry having settled and be having the life experience to potentially be more confident, to care less about making a little bit of a fool of myself and also because potentially my ability to judge a situation is better because of my life experience. So the standard trope of YA where someone doesn't know if someone else likes them, likes them or just likes them or doesn't know whether this person is being cruel for one reason or another. It's very important to teenagers, but it can become, I find it wearing after a while if there's too much of it. But if I read a YA book that has a lot of it in, instead of saying this is a bad book because I didn't enjoy it, I'd say that the there is extensive portrayal of the mix of utter certainty and complete uncertainty that characterises the teenage experience. So readers who think that characters should just be locked up in a room together until they all sort it out might find this book irritating. So while people might disagree with my decision on whether I liked a book or not, it's not controversial because I'm saying these are the qualities of the book. I don't happen to like books with this quality. Or I do happen to like books with this quality, but I'm not judging the book, saying it's intrinsically bad. So the review doesn't trigger any tribal, I really love this book, so people who don't like the book are saying I have bad taste because I'm fully admitting that some people might like the book if they like these other kind of books. So I've been racking my brains for controversy. And I've thought of a couple of instances. First one, Vampire of the Mists, the first in the Ravenloft series. But it's the first vampire book I ever bought and my mother discovered me reading it in the sense that she walked into the room while I was reading it and noticed that I was reading a vampire book and I was a teenager at the time very long time ago and she was startled that I was reading this because it's horror. Now it's not actually particularly horrific horror. It's pretty much fantasy. But that caused a very minor discussion, a couple of minutes, which in the context of me having been reading above my age and reading extensively for many, many years by that point, was a noticeable deviation from the 
read lots of things. So that's as close as I got to controversy, potentially. <clears throat> Second controversy about my opinions on books was an Edith Wharton novel that I studied for English literature in school. I can't remember which one. I don't think it was Age of Innocence. So, but, uh, some of the characters are hurrying to church, but they're late for church because they've spent time making themselves fashionable and the fashionable clothing isn't great for moving quickly in so they're slowed down and I said that I didn't like the book didn't want to read it because the characters are like this and my English master pointed out that meant it was a good book because the author had done their job. They, they, these characters were supposed to come across as going to church for the wrong reasons and being shallow and irreligious. And my point was that that was the problem. The author had done a very good job of creating characters who were shallow and unlikable that the author had created this book that I didn't want to read. And I could see the technical skill in creating a book that I didn't want to read, but fundamentally they'd done a brilliant job of creating a book that I didn't want to read because it was about characters I didn't like. And at the time that was kind of controversial because if you're at school, you either you're brainy and swatty and you like a subject or you don't like a subject because that's all that stuffy learning stuff so not liking Edith Wharton because it's classic literature and that's a bunch of fusty nonsense you want to be reading like exciting pulp fantasy that's an acceptable opinion to have or liking Edith Wharton because of her betrayal of that particular life and liking the prose and so on. That's an acceptable if different grouping, but not liking it because she's done a good job of creating these characters that you happen to not like isn't the kind of opinion that was expected. So that caused a little bit of a, well, where do we file this person away within the social groupings of my school? But, uh, kinky dinkly, it's exactly the same reason that I don't like Fitzgerald. But having that opinion, having the opinion that Fitzgerald does a brilliant job of writing stories about people that I don't want to read about is when you're past your 30th birthday, suddenly an entirely reasonable insight for an avid reader to have. People don't blink at me not liking Fitzgerald because he does a great job of writing stories I don't want to read. But, uh, hmm, controversy-wise, I am not very controversial, unless you disagree. Given the topic, I invite you to disagree with me if you can. Come up with a reason why being as objective as possible when talking about books is controversial. Criticise my ability to not indulge in swathing damnation of entire chunks of the reading public on the basis that they managed to get past page two of a particular book. Toodaloo!